Well, you know, it's funny. I was doing an, an interview a couple of days ago for the eWomen's Network, mm -hmm. and they said, when we mention that word billionaire, how do you feel? And I said, I think it's the most degrading label to put on anyone because I want to be known more than just have received a lot of money, okay? <laughs> You know, and yes, we built it out of a company, and it, you know, it worked out just great. But I, you know, the hair stands up on the back of my neck whenever people introduce me for that because I really am much more than just the greenback. Than the billions. And the billions, you know. <laughs> yes, you know, a lot of people in our society puts a lot of clout into being wealthy. And I think the priorities are all in the wrong place that way. I mean, when I pass on, I do not want to be known just for being the first black billion, woman be a billionaire. So are you confirming that you are a billionaire? <laughs> yes. Okay, that's great. Hey, that is totally cool with me. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, have, I have no problem with that. Um, but then the black, the black female part, you don't, that's not an issue. You're fine with that. No, I am not fine with that, and I just don't want people to even say it. You know, I'm, just I'm much more of a be. woman of substance yeah, there you than go. just yeah. money. Yeah, well, there yes. you go. Okay. okay. What, uh, what has the money meant to you? Well, in a sense, it's, it's let's use the word, bought me freedom. Okay, it's yeah. bought me freedom in the sense that now I have the ability to make my own decisions about how I want to spend my money, I think it's important that I have been able to reach out to others to give away mm -hmm. a lot of my fortune to help others. And I think of anything that has come out of receiving money, and not just receiving, wouldn't hand it over to me. I've worked for every penny. Absolutely. Um, that I am able to reach out and help others. And that has really been very important to me. You said something interesting in a, I don't know if it was a speech or an interview, but you said that giving money away is a component of having it but you said that it's not a transaction you, you can't look at it as a transa transformation it's transformation it's transformational um i wear many hats and i think probably the the real hat that i'm wearing right now and we'll be wearing for quite a few years is the global ambassador for care and um what that is is i have really put out a five million dollar challenge where I'm trying to get women and men to match me dollar for dollar to really be able to help communities globally of women who are the most marginal, marginalized. Mm -hmm. um, we have over 70% of women globally in poverty and that means they're making less than two dollars a day and when that happens it then presents other issues of sexual trafficking they're not able to take care of their kids so their kids are dying and if we don't reach out and start stepping up to the plate, and I, when I say globally, I even mean domestically here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But if we don't reach out and really start helping women and women standing behind women, our entire community structure will fall apart. And I'm not kidding. We are the most important men. I will get to you in a second. <laughs> but we are the most important human beings on the face of this earth. We really are the backbone to communities and society. But, but then what do you say to the message that's being, since, since you were there at the, at the building of BET, and I, right. watched, I watched a lot of BET over the last week, how do you, how do you match that <laughs> statement to the programming? I have nothing to do with the program. I know you don't. I know now. you don't, but you know, but you know <laughs> it started it's there. in your legacy. Yes. But I will tell you that while I was at BET and people that worked at BET knew that I was fighting it and from that, the very, I, very right. beginning. That's why I started a show called Teen Summit. Mm -hmm. Now I will tell you point blankly, when those videos started out, BET was the first one to especially carry the videos because MTV would not let African American pop artists perform on MTV. Did you all know that? No. Yes, I, I did, I did yes. know that. So we carried, you know, um, Michael Jackson, and if you remember those videos, they were fun. Well, Michael they Jackson were clean. was clean compared to what Yes, is. but all of the video artists at that time, it was clean, it was fun, it was storytelling. 
And I remember being on the treadmill and actually watching this and because I own the network, I was able to also get copies of the tapes and I would run them and be on the treadmill and I said, this is just so much fun. And then I remember, I would say within that year, we started going down this slippery slope of really turning the page to videos that I th really felt were inappropriate. So I tried to form a committee at BET that we would then look at all the videos that were being sent in and, and literally turning down those that I felt were inappropriate for young minds and young children to watch. Especially women. And especially, especially women. And then that committee was disbanded <laughs> and I fought it and fought it and fought it and then suddenly now all hell was broken loose. And I am telling you that if you turn the volume down you're watching pornography. Yeah. I am sorry, but you are watching well, they pornography. Have, uh, there have been protesters outside the home of Deborah Lee. Right. Uh, I got an email from uh, somebody who's a broadcasting executive who just said that um, Sheila Johnson was the network's vice president for corporate affairs and, and mentions that you did develop uh, mm -hmm. Teen Summit and that it did focus on drug use and AIDS and other issues, but yes. that but that you wanted to take the programming to a more responsible level, but, but it wasn't cost effective. And then he said she has continued this effort by creating the Washington Mystics Hip Hop Forums. Right. Now, has that found a TV audience? No, it has not found a TV audience. Does anybody want to put us on TV? Well, which brings me to the, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're going to get into all, right. all the areas where you are, yeah. are working, but why isn't there a salamander network, a salamander channel? Well. It's when cable, the birth of cable, it was very easy to start networks then. Mm -hmm. Now it is Hard. cost prohibitive. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the airways are pretty much taken up. I mean, Lifetime now is not Lifetime, Oxygen is being bought mm -hmm. up by right. NBC. Um, TV is costly. And my way of trying to reach out, I mean, we're trying to work with public access mm -hmm. here in the District of Columbia, but the hip hop forms that I've been doing. What I've been trying to do is actually bring education onto the basketball court. And I was really, I'm really excited about this concept. And I've taken exactly the same formula that I used for Teen Summit of actually having panelists and experts there and bringing kids into the Verizon Center. And one of the most successful ones that we had ever done was uh, for AIDS. Did you know that the District of Columbia has the highest AIDS rate of yeah. any city Yeah, that's among our young people? Do you use mystics and wizards or just the just women the players? Just the mystics. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes if I can find Gilbert in the lo in locker room area, they'll drag him in. you know, they'll drag in. Mm -hmm. But it was very successful because we had about 800 young people show up. I had Ashley Judd there. I had Winona Judd. I had the drugs, I mean the AIDS czars, mm -hmm. I, I brought in the experts and we actually tested these young people and they were given their results. I said, I don't need to know, but I want you to be tested. Mm -hmm. And they sat there as we were really feeding them the information. A lot of this is lack of education and lack of communication. It's important that we start talking to our young people and we're not talking to them enough. They were actually shocked by the information that we were giving them. They were shocked about the lack of knowledge of, I mean, they, that they had themselves. Yeah. But, you know, we have kids having kids. Our teachers are not really allowed to talk about sex education in schools. I mean, things are happening out there. We are shutting down communication out there. And, the, and because of this, ignorance is thriving.